Hello and welcome to the Kerno Cast, where I, Lewis Pauling, talks to people from all walks of life from across the duchy. We are particularly focusing on Cornwall's entrepreneurs, their businesses and how they contribute to the county. But we're not going to forget about those unsung heroes that power our community. We are here to spread the word of all these organisations so that you can get involved within your community or support that local business that you didn't know was just around the corner. So join me on a journey around the county from the comfort of your car, armchair or wherever else you might listen. Cheers, my dears. This is the Kernocast with me, Lewis Pauling, and today we have a return uh, guest, Jameson Spargo. Hello. And this is Make Cornwall Great Again, part two. <laughs> oh, uh, yes. That's going to carry on that name. Oh, I love it. I yeah, love it. It's great. I think it's great. It's going to work. It's going to help. I was, I've, I've, I've even toyed with the hashtag of um, MCGA. Um, <laughs> Muk ga! I, I, it works. I don't know. I don't know. I'd say, I don't know how many comparisons to Trump we can get away with before people think we like him. <laughs> well, you can just, well, I don't know. You can just, ki- well, if they listen to it enough and we ridicule him enough, then they'll, they'll soon get the picture uh, that don't we don't actually appreciate him. I don't know if we, we should be ridiculing him. him. It should be a case of if he's doing a shit job, we take him to task. Yeah. It's as simple as that. I mean, the good thing is we don't actually have to talk about him that much because it's... Not, he's, not he's, today. He's not, we've, got, on this. we've got big issues afoot today. Yeah. My goodness. So let's put a bit of little bit of context in what's going on. So in approximately less than two weeks from today, uh, which is a Monday the 24th or 25th, I think. This is the 24th today. 24th. We have some local elections to go that we got to go for. And we also then June the 8th. Yep. Is it? We June have, the 8th. We have a general election that has just been sprung upon us. Um, many of you will talk know. about the big events that have happened in France as well. Yes, a lot going on there. A lot going on. Um, but maybe we should try and recap a little bit from part one. What did we? What did, have you listened to it back at all? I, I did listen to it back. I so so much talking. Oh yeah, so 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 much. very random, very, very jumpy very around. Ra- it wasn't necessarily what I would call very precise. This this one is going to be a lot more precise because obviously mm. we're talking about events that are about to happen. So yeah. there'll be no going off topic, I think. Today. No, yeah, I, don't, I think it'll be a bit less and hopefully we'll just kind of... I'll try and keep it well, to... Yeah, let's not, let's not, do, let's not do two hours like we did last no, time. That was, was mad. That was long. Good, was. but long. Yeah, I think as well. I think as we go, the more often we do them, the more narrowed down and focused we can become because oh, it, it, it was always going to be like that. We don't really, right. you know, we needed a starting point and there was somewhere oh, to course. start from. I think I think if we were going forward with this, I mean, after the general election, because again, I don't think maybe and Colonel are going to do too well in this one. I think there's a I think lot they'll of, do all right on the local side. They, they, they probably will do, absolutely. But in terms of the, the general election, mm. well, let's see if they can get to maybe 6,000. If I can get to six thousand, that's a that's a result. Yeah, definitely. I think. Um, well, while I've been since I've been doing this, I've been on Twitter a lot more, mm-hmm. and um, obviously following a lot of uh, sort of Cornwall related nationalism type things and stuff like that. I've actually mm. um, maybe in Kerno have followed me on Twitter about time. Yeah, about time. Has, has Dick Cole good. got back to you in terms mm. of actually doing anything? No. Oh, for- and I've he, I've sent him a couple. I've sent him the part one of <laughs> this podcast a couple of times and they've um they've not been overly well they haven't, they haven't responded at all, at all except for following me which has, it's a start that's, it's a start yes I can, baby steps Lewis. that's it so no i'm pleased they're probably quite busy as well at the minute to, but then this is the type of thing that they need to do but of course well we'll see but that, i tell you that was the biggest thing i took away well it was hard because it's hard to, mm. until we sort of like, I didn't write a lot of down from the first one. I think knowing how much 
money we kind of spend and sort of understand that sort of thing. Yeah, quite... there's there's so many statistics which we could have honed in on. Mm. More research can easily be done. I mean, I know a lot of what I said was off top of the head. Yeah, yeah. Well, put, you know, I had some all of it, of it in front was. of me, but you know, a lot of it is the thought cycle that goes on within my brain, which is not a good thing to be displaying <laughs> for the entire internet to listen to. But never mind. No, true. Do you know how many view? Do, uh, well, let's see how many people we got hold of with it. Do you care? Oh, you can let me know. Absolutely. So, in the the first one, we had so far we've had forty five people on YouTube and forty five downloads. Beautiful. It's quite good. Ninety people. That's, that's ninety that. people. Didn't you tell me right. that someone had downloaded from many many miles away? Yeah, I've had people download from St. Lucia and Fantastic. I've had I've I regularly on almost every episode I've got it must be one or two people that are downloading from Virginia. Fantastic. I um, there, there must be some good old Cornish folk that have travelled many miles. Why Virginia? And I think there's um a con- my stepdad was based there ah. when he was in the navy. I've got a feeling that might be no, the well, way it was. But no, anyway, thank you very much. much. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Yeah. You know, spreading the word is always a good thing. Yeah, as long right. as we're spreading a good, cohesive, sensible word as opposed to just rambling bollocks. Yeah, true. <laughs> One thing that did stick in my head that you brought up, mm-hmm. and I think it was definitely, it was always going to stick in my head to be fair, but the fact that you mentioned about uh, cannabis being a part of the agenda for maybe making well, Cornwall a local thing. Yeah. I think something like you like you was trying to allude to on the original was saying that there needs to be one standout thing that gets people to move their vote from the damn conservative Labour of to course. the county, um, the maybe and Kerno vote, for example. I mean, exactly. It, it, that's the kind of thing which you need to do. You, you look at Look at UKIP, for example. Mm. Um, I would suggest that in both local and general elections, they are going to be walloped. Yeah. I think they're going to take a heavy beating just because their big thing was trying to get out of Europe. Yeah, and We're now going out of Europe. So I would now look at UKIP and say, well, why would you vote for them? I, I can't... Even if I was of conservative mind, I'd be looking at it going, just, I can't see what people would vote for them. If they were going to do that, they'd probably vote Tory because, again, yeah. they are pro-Brexit. Yeah. Yeah, true. Or certainly hard Brexit. I mean, Brexit is happening regardless. Mm. So it's now a case of whether you go soft or hard. Yeah, okay. So explain to me a little bit, or the listener. I mean, I've got an idea of roughly what it means, but mm. I'm not up on it as such. I'm not like read the, the the definition of what a hard Brexit is or what a soft Brexit is. So what do you the, think? Is the difference between hard and soft Brexit is how many of the rules they wish to change regarding European Union policy. So, for mm-hmm. example, hard Brexit will be looking more at doing tighter control on immigration. Yep. They'd be looking at all the rules that the European Union provide and see what they can take out, essentially. Mm-hmm. Whereas with a softer Brexit, it would be a case of we wish not to be a member state. There's some of the rules we don't like, but we will still contribute towards it. We still want a free flow of people and mm. we still want to stay as close trading partners. The big thing with the hard Brexit is that we'd have to renegotiate the trade deals, yeah, particularly with Europe and things mm. like that. We would have to, would that be renegotiating with Europe as a as Europe as a whole? Euro, yes. Euro, right. Europe as a whole. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so what else? Is there anything that you took away from the first one at all? Um, it, it was it was quite interesting to see that despite the fact we're both politically quite similar, there was mm. a lot of differences that we had in opinion, mm. which is classic. You know, that's one of the things with the libertarian left. You know, everyone seems to think that they know all, mm. despite the fact that's just it's just not the case. Yeah, there's course. so many different branches. You look at the number of voting options you have on the left compared to what's on the right. Yeah. On the left, you've got like the Greens, you've got the Liberals, you've got Labour. There's all sorts of smaller parties like the Liberal Party, Mepi yeah. and Kerno. On the right, Conservative UKIP. Yeah. And UKIP is, again, obsolete I would call almost. that a... I wouldn't say obsolete. People are still entitled to their vote, but 
I think it will be a much less popular option this time around. Yeah. Because, again, they don't have that carrot for people to vote on. Mm. I think the it's funny why she's brought it up now. Like, she's brought it up, uh, Theresa May, this is, like, quite quick. Like, she's just gone, bam, there it is. I think she's done it in some ways in a, to her benefit because the left is so... Disorganised. So, yeah. Just Unbelievable. Just, yeah, just doesn't know what it's doing, where it's going. And the right is pretty stable. Like, she's going oh. off this strong, stable side of things, um, leadership, that she's got the... I think she'll lose a few seats, but she's going to keep enough to... I don't know. Well, like in Cornwall, do you think do you think we're going to go all conservative again? Pretty Ooh, much. Uh, I don't know. It's hard to the, tell. The, the, the problem is, I think, I think in terms of the number of people that will vote conservative, that will go up one hundred percent. By how much? I, I couldn't tell you. But nationally, nationally, yeah. Whether they'll have as many seats, I'm not so sure. Yeah. Because again, they would have upset a lot of what I would call more liberal conservatives yeah who would have wanted to stay within the european union there would be a lot of people who are going to be like that and they may defect they may go liberal they're not going to go labor i think labor are going to have a torrid time i think yeah um the liberals will gain significantly i would imagine but it just depends obviously with the next six or seven weeks Mm. how they you know sell themselves yeah I think locally, um, I think that the Liberal Democrats will gain one or two seats. Oh, yeah. I, um, I, I think so. And I, obviously to the Conservatives' detriment. Is it, it, I don't know It's going to be different with all the different parishes. Yeah, of course. It's going to be completely different wherever you go. I mm. mean, the issues with Shepherds and Blazy, I, I couldn't tell you what they were. Not a clue. Oh, no. But then that's down to more like the local elections rather than... Oh, of do you course. Know I think? Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, in, in terms of the local elections... It's, it, the thing is, that, that's just, it depends who's running, doesn't it? Oh, of like, course. It, it, it is a matter of who who it is that's going running. Right, exactly. Certain party. You almost don't... I've, I, I have I have a small confession, Lewis. Hmm? I once voted Conservative. Did you? Slap myself <laughs> on the end. To be fair, you, it is because of that basis. It was because of the person, not necessarily because of his politics. Yeah, it's funny that on a local level... It is more down to the person. But oh, as soon yeah, as it course. gets to a national level, it's about the party. And it still, mm-hmm. should still be about the person, surely. It should. Well, I'll, I'll, bring, up, I'll bring up Glorious UKIP again. They're not glorious. <laughs> but they're, they're, can you name their MP? Their MP? Yes, the what? MP they have in this country. Oh, no. Uh, no, I couldn't name him. But he, he was a Conservative or something. He was a Conservative. It was we, Douglas Carswell. Yeah, we mentioned him before, didn't we? Last yes. Time. And again, the reason he got in was not because he was UKIP, but because he's Douglas Carswell. Yeah. So it does happen, mm. but it's nowhere near as often. No, I don't think. No, it's too. The thing it's kind of blown itself up to this level where it's about which team you support, mm. rather a- than absolutely. You know, I had a um, a local a lady this morning running mm-hmm. for the St. Blasey area on the podcast, and she's running for a Conservative Party. And she's just like, you know, the the infighting between just like some local elections between parties. Like if she was not, you know, door knocking or whatever, said, no, nope, I am not voting for Conservative, whatever. And she's like, all right, but, you know, it's, I'm not, I'm only running for Conservative because I need a team. She needs a team in some ways because it's like, it helps. If she ran as an independent, she wouldn't get the support and she wouldn't well, get half no, as much done. Of course So she like she needs to, and she thinks that. You know, conservatives it's very for difficult for fine. the it's certainly really difficult for the independent candidate because you have to be that's a sole issue basis yeah generally with any independent candidate it is because something really big is going down and you want it to either stop or to happen yeah it, it's one of those kind of deals and you know down in Cornwall can you name any one big instant thing that could make people change over to an independent candidate? No. I couldn't. No. You you can go, oh, yeah, all the roadworks in Bobman. I'd be like, they've happened. Just yeah. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. They're, uh, it's happened. <laughs> They're yeah. going through. This, this is the problem with the local elections in Bobman, because I have no idea how people are going to vote because of the amount of disruption the roadworks have caused. Yeah. That's an interesting topic. Have you, how do you, have you had anybody come knocking on your doors at all? 
Um, I live in a flat where no one can see my door, so <laughs> I, I get the joy of having no one coming to knock on my door. It's lovely. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't mind. No. I wouldn't mind. I'd, I'd spout my views. Mm. I'd tell them how I thought. The, the roadworks haven't really bothered me. They're a mild inconvenience. Yeah. And I'm trying to look at it long term, which yeah. is how you got to deal with it. Yeah, if you don't, if you don't look at it in a long term basis, you you're screwed. Oh, of course, no it's, it's, it's infrastructure side of it, isn't it? At the end of the day, mm-hmm. it, it, that is what I'm one big issue for Cornwall is infrastructure on a lot of levels. Oh yeah. Um, you wait until next year when they start doing the rest of the A30. Yeah. And the amount of bitching and complaining. Yeah, you're but get. like what? What's the, you, you, it needs to be done. Of course it you needs to be You want it to happen, so just don't complain about it. Just, ah, just, oh, the roadworks cost me 20 minutes this morning. Yeah, but it's going to save you fucking 15, 20 minutes every single day. Going A forward. year, two years down the line. Exactly. It's going to make, so, it's going to make travelling between Chiverton and Cardinal Cross just dreamy. Yeah, but that's a good point though. what it is now. You look at Temple, right? A lot of the money came from European Union, didn't it? It London. did. And I'm this, guessing... this money has also come from European Union. So do we need to make sure that that happens before? That... It, it, that's, that's safe and guaranteed. There's no oh, is. issues with that at all. Oh, okay. It's because we still get European Union money until 2020 regardless. Oh, what okay. happens after 2020, what I would like to call the dark times... <laughs> I'm not very, not very... Um, You're not very optimistic about this, Brexit, um, but in, in terms of Cornwall, no. Because mm-hmm. it's always been rather neglected by England. Yeah. Hence the reason we're both quite positive towards the idea of an independent Cornwall. Yeah. Because I think it could look after itself better than England looks after us. Mm-hmm. I think that's the key. Yeah. Personally. But it's... Yeah. It's not great. No. Like I said, I voted Remain. Not because I liked the European Union. I think there's a lot of issues with it. But in order to fix issues, you've got to be part of the party. Yeah. If you're not part of it, well, you know, whatever. So, yeah, you, the, the people yeah. said, nah, we, we don't want to fix it. We just want out. Yeah. Which, fair enough. It was done democratically. It was indeed. On the side of Cornish independence regarding these two elections that are coming up, mm-hmm. are we going to see any sort of shift at all? Um, because of everything that's been going on, I would say probably not. Right. There might, there, maybe a small swing up or down. Too delicate a time to do you, doing it, anything oh, so goodness. drastic? Oh, goodness me, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you, you, you've got way too much going on as it is. Brexit being such a massive deal. Mm. Um, you know, it, it's too early or you, you certainly wouldn't have enough time to be able to come up with something super drastic to get people to swing over immediately. Yeah. You you look at the Scottish Nationals, it took them years to build up the level of trust and to build up the confidence for people to go, actually, we want to try and do this. Yeah. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's a it's a long-term project as opposed to a short-term one. Yeah. How can we beat the Tories? Yeah. And, and how, like, how can you beat... Tactical voting. Well, actually, do you know what? There was something... Once I started doing all this and that and mm. uh, I was looking on Twitter and I found... Um, this one Twitter account, and he was interested in being on. It, we never got around to doing it, but he had um, a like a conference. This is something I've mentioned before. If you want a good liberal left wing party, you should merge them together. Of course, you should. Yeah, it would it would easily beat the Conservatives. I dare say. Yeah, but you know because the divisions are so wide, you know you have. People. And the thing is, uh, what are they going to? What are they going to agree on? <laughs> like currently, nothing. Well, that's yeah, the that's problem. it. Like, I don't understand why. But they're not that much different. Why are they struggling to? Why are they struggling so much to to find some common ground? I think, I think because a lot of liberal Democrats are very centrist. Yeah. And Labour currently are are very left wing. Certainly, yeah. in, certainly in comparison to our lifetime, when Tony Blair would almost be considered Tory light. Yeah. You know, now, you know, it, it it's almost like, well, I say a breath of fresh air, it's something different. What's, what's Jeremy Corbyn going on? Oh, we're going to get rid of, um, uh, our biggest thing is fighting the, the elite that isn't, the system that isn't working for everyday people, or whatever that's. Well, I can't it's remember very his, socialist. Yeah, I can't remember what his slogan is. What's his slogan? 
Slogan uh, should just be fuck the Tories. I think we'd win then. <laughs> that would work. Progressive Alliance of Cornwall. They had a they had a um a thing back along. Oh, okay. There's a, actually pin tweet here. 2017 Cornwall Council elections and interactive map. Here we go. What's Fun. this then? So we'll Fantastic. Like, I'll turn well it for you. Thank you. Um so yeah, we're looking at a map of Cornwall at the moment. Look at those. Oh my god, there's a That's purple quite good. bit. There's a purple bit. Oh yeah, look. Oh my goodness. Uh so it's a map of Cornwall with all the different constituencies that have got different colours. Obviously, there's quite a big bit of um blue through there, um, but there's yeah. North there's Cornwall is quite very yellow, yellow. Yeah. and actually a lot of sort of foy. So, areas. so obviously the red bits are going to be Labour. Yep. I, I see a mysterious green bit over here. Yes. I don't know how. I wonder if we click on this link. I hope. Maybe. It, I hope. I hope it will be a little bit more interactive. Maybe. Maybe not. But yeah, this is <laughs> this is the website, Progressive Alliance for Cornwall. Oh the, yes. The, the idea was they're looking to try and join people, join parties together to. Not let the Tories get in, but I think that's more of a. I t- yeah, it's difficult it's to. It's a very, it's a very is, aggressive. Is, it's a very aggressive stance. It's yeah. very difficult to make that happen. What's this? Scroll down on that one. <laughs> oh, oh, never mind. Progressive Alliance for Cornwall. You need to get a better website designer. <laughs> I, I think know, it's a small movement. I think it's a small thing. They had about is, eighty people a, go to County Hall to for their conference. Oh man, um, that's which good. is that's quite a good that's turnout. Good. I think. But th- th- this is the thing. You, you know. These these things will start off small, but if you have the right way of selling it and you get people on board, mm. it will grow. It's as simple as that. But definitely, I think that, like you're saying, a lot. You know, this is all left leaning stuff. There's lots of people setting up stuff on the left, but mm. there's no one. No not, one needs to do it on the right because they have the conservatives. Yeah, they're sorted. I but there's know. no. They need need to find a way to join together to really or bring something in that is really game changing. And you that's, know, that, and that's the key. And start something new that is game changing because they're all near enough the same. Mm-hmm. You know, what really is the difference between the Liberals and, and Labour at the minute, do you think? Um, the fact that they have a scary ideologue as a leader. <laughs> it's, it's true. Yeah. The, yeah. Here's the problem with Jeremy Corbyn Corbyn is too honest. Yeah. So he'll come up with ideas which, you know, conservatives will uh, at. They're like, oh, maximum wage. Uh, and they'll they'll gabber on about things like that, and oh no, the NHS is failing. We should just privatise it and things like that. Yeah. Problem is, is that when Fidel Castro died and when Martin McGuinness died, mm-hmm. these not very nice people, which generally they aren't. Yeah. He was very supportive of them, and people will go, "The man's a nutcase," and when. You know, they'll say, oh, he's an IRA sympathiser and things like that. He is. Yeah. He is in the eye. He may not necessarily come across as that, but he, he is. And he's far too peace-loving as well. I think if you look at the whole situation in the world regarding how politics is going at the minute, mm-hmm. especially with the rise of populist movements and things like that, people generally don't like you know the influence from outside outside forces away from their country yeah i think well and i think also there's you you think like his slogan at the minute like we were just saying before Mm -hmm. corbyn's is he's look he's i think he's also trying to play the extreme card because he's trying to he's he's doing that to make to have that focus on something. So he's making a focus of the, the elite that is running the country outside of the government, if you like. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, you know, it, 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 he's trying to find that niche, if you like. And there's a lot of, especially younger voters, I think they're very he, disenfranchised and they're very oh my like, goodness. they're like, well, yeah, there is this massive thing. We're not getting a foot, we're not getting a leg up here. We can't get our foot on to you, leg ourselves up. It'd, it'd and be up to trying to encourage young people to try and make a change about it. Yeah. You know, they are the most well, you can see there's an excellent graph. If you type in yep. UK opinion polls, this is from the Telegraph. Yes. Who, who's obviously, you know, they do have a right wing bias, but they're Accuracy of reporting is generally actually pretty good. I can't really yeah. fault them. Obviously, their opinion pieces are um, as such. 
but you scroll down. That is what they reckon the opinion polls are. So we're looking at 22nd of April, Conservative mm. with uh, 46.2%. Bear they, in mind that when they won the election, they had 32%. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Bloody hell. Makes sense. And then, well, you look at it again, Labour 25.8, mm-hmm. Lib Dem 11.4, mm-hmm. UKIP 7.8, and the Greens 2.6. Yes. So... And obviously, there's no maybe in Kernel on there. No maybe um, in There's no <laughs> Scottish nationals. No. There's no Irish parties. Yeah. So, yeah, that's Intriguing. a whopping great percentage. Yeah. So. What are you? Well, it's probably not whopping, but... Well, 46%. Though, oh, yeah, sorry, for Conservative. Yeah, sorry, yeah. I thought you meant with the, the for other. Labour, the, no, the one that would be the, other. For, well, I just seen on Twitter just then, when I was flicking through finding that other guy, finding that other thing there, um, that Labour's... Um, Opin- the polls for Labour are better for Corbyn. Now, so little, 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 um, which way do you go with that? Little, um, little bit of, um, what's the word I want to look? A little bit of history about polling from 2015. <laughs> mm. So, since 2015, I thought I'll go with what the polls are saying in terms of what's going to happen in terms of elections and things like yeah, that yeah. and Brexit and the American presidential election yeah now 2015 they said that the Conservatives and the Labour Party would get the same amount of seats there was a 90 seat discrepancy yeah which is really vast the Liberals oh, got huge. absolutely tanked yeah. in that election as, as I did predict Brexit they said, oh, no, every single one said remain. Yeah. We voted we to go out. Yeah. In America, and this is for your American listeners out there. Oh, yeah. Most of the media, and this is part of the reason why I think Trump got in, most of the media were very Clinton-friendly and very yeah. by Only Fox News, of all people. The, well, they're very Republican anyway. They are very, they're very pro-Republican. But they were somewhat surprising. Oh, that, well, they were weighted towards Trump, but they were way more balanced than you know, news networks. And Trump got in. Yeah. Yeah, the polls are... Uh, polls it's just, cannot the polls? be relied on. And no. there's this thing called the shy Tory hmm. effect. Now, for, for whatever reason, I've, I've never understood why. I have asked on other bits of social media as to why... Tories don't like sharing their opinion. And no one can really explain it. Yeah. It's just weird. They don't like to say how they want to vote. Mm. So when you do these polls, you have to take into consideration the fact that there are going to be some people who just don't want to talk about their voting preference. Of course. And largely, they vote Tory. I'll tell you one thing. Talking about polls, didn't you... I, I did do a ton of polls. A ton of polls. I did do a ton of polls. Um, we won't go into detail on all of them because some of them are not relevant to today's topic. But no, it's I did. I will, I will certainly look at. Um, I need to find them again, though. That's uh, the thing. I will know how to. Um, if you, yeah, go on, bombing voice. There bombing voice. This is uh, this is very dangerous. T- dangerous so group. We're this talking is, about. By the way. We're talking about v- <laughs> <laughs> polls and not being reliable. So this is very you... bombing centric. Oh boy, <laughs> this is. This is one of the most dangerous sites in the world. If you ever get the chance to have a look and see what people have wrote, it's oh, it's it's quite incredible. Oh, now, it's funny. Okay. So yes, I I did do a poll on this. Uh, I did this on the twentieth of March. So you know, five weeks ago. So this is before. This, this, is, it, this is actually this first one is very very interesting. If you read it out, well, I'll read it out. So last, I'll go on. You read it out. Actually, lastly, for person. today, if a general election was called for two weeks' time. And you had to vote for someone, who would it be? It, if you're a shy Tory, don't be shy. People won't run past you for choosing what you think is right, <laughs> which is true. It's true. I will, you know, I will debate anybody who's, well, some who's conservative, but I would want you to engage in some form of debate. Mm. The large problem, particularly with this group, and there's another one I joined a um, conservative talking group as oh, well. Oh, yeah, okay. Because, again, if you want, Balanced opinion. Yeah. You you gotta get all sides. And they Well, it's, it's let's talk a, about who let's talk about the 
the polls here then. So, so where people the current poll. So th- remember, this is very Bobmin centric. <laughs> yes. And this was shortly after we had been discussing what we was discussing. Of um, course, not, yes. Uh, part one. Yep. Um, we have like what is that? 15, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19 people <laughs> said. How many? Democrat. How many people voted in total? Forty-three people voted, which is lovely. Thank you. Thank you all. Pretty much the same <laughs> turnout for. Polls, isn't it? <laughs> so, but it's funny, like you know, how we just done that thing, and then shortly when, after, when we when we uh, when we next converse, we will go through all of these polls because there's yeah. a lot of questions which well, I yeah, asked. That's right. This is quite an interesting one, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so, so, so nine... twenty out of forty-three people voted for Lib Dem. Nineteen, is it? No, 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 twenty. Is it? Oh, okay. Sixteen plus four. It's fifteen. Does that say fifteen? It says fifteen. Where's your glasses? Not me. So, out of forty-two people. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I do need glasses. 19 <laughs> voted for Liberal. Yeah. So, and then, more, just, well, 19 <clears throat> out of 42. So. Which in North Cornwall, you would say that. That's probably about so if right. If you were to extrapolate, though, if you were to extrapolate that, the Liberal Democrats are leading in the North Cornwall side of things. If you, if, if, if you, if you, if you, if you were, go by polls. If you were to simply look at one very biased group, <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's the that's, thing. That's, uh, if I was to do the same with the Conservative group, you know full well that 99% of them are yeah. going to say Labour is the worst thing in the world. They yeah. need to rot in hell. But they, then, There may be a split between the Liberals, the Tories and, the, and UKIP, mm. but I imagine it wouldn't be much more wide than that. And two people voted for Meb and Kerno. Who were those two people, Lewis? Oh, me and you. <laughs> <laughs> All so, right. How so, ironic that we was making that discussion. We had that discussion, and we've gone and done that. The well, thing is, though, are you? Do you? Do you feel like you will go? You will vote for maybe in the new objection. Probably not. No. no, I hate to say. Um, it, it's very where I am because obviously we're in different. We're in different wards, so it's good. You, we are. You get the chance to get rid of Steve Double. Mm. Who I, a lot of people who I know are not. I like the way you said that you get the you get the chance get, to get, get rid of rid. him, not not to like get him back in. Again, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm I am shameful, not shamefully anti-Tory. I'm quite obviously anti-Tory. Yes, but I'm, I'm unlike a lot of people who are anti-Tory. I'm willing to, you know, debate people about it. Mm. It's as simple as that. And it's not to say that everything I say is going to be hundred percent correct. No, of course, for, for sure, but. You know, I, it would it would depend on what happened in Bobman. Who would be going for the the um, role? Because obviously yeah. there have been some circumstances, which means the regular candidate may not necessarily want to go for it. So mm-hmm. it's it's very touch and go. If we do reconvene before the general election, yeah, then we'd have a better idea. But goodness knows, it, it took us about six or seven weeks just to reconvene. And yeah, that was yeah, it's going to be like that. Yeah, right. But then, okay, so moving on from that, from the fact that the Liberal Democrats are going to win in North Cornwall this mm-hmm. year. Um, um, just, <laughs> just for breakdown before we run away. Well, there was 36 comments on that one, no? Mm-hmm. Um, just for breakdown, there were 10 people who voted Tory. Yeah. There were six who wanted Labour. Yeah. Three who wanted UKIP. Two for the Greens. And, of course, me and Lewis... On our own, going... Fighting the Cornish... Fighting, fighting. Flying the Cornish flag. Yep. <laughs> flying it, but, it, but it's just us. Yeah. <laughs> no one else. Never mind. Would you, Lewis, want mandatory voting or not? Like they do in Australia. Um, I don't think so. No. What are the options we have? No, but there, uh, there can be no moaning if you don't vote. I didn't put that in. Mm. I allowed... Oh. It was one of the... It was. I think it was the only poll where I allowed... People to put in an option. Oh, I okay. just put in yes, yes, with a you know, with a what's the word I'm looking for? Yes, but only if they had if they had a non void. void option. Okay, no. Oh no, I think I just did yes and no. Oh okay, I think I just did it as simply as that. Ironic. I, I but people are like, oh no, we should be allowed opinion mm-hmm. on this particular instance. No, <laughs> you either say yes or no. I think so, it's as simple as that. Yeah, and in the end, 24 people per- went for the, you shouldn't moan about it. Well, Wait, but I hate that. I hate that. Why Why not? You, If you don't want, you, you, by not voting, you are also casting a vote, If as far as I'm concerned. Mm, no. Why not? 
for me personally, these are the kind of people who say, oh, politics is crap. I go, well, that's very good. Who do you vote for? Well, don't vote. Shut up then. You don't contribute. You do. You're not, no, you're not contributing. I don't... But I, you you I, contribute you to com- nothing. And when you contribute to nothing, you have no say. Correct? No. Not correct. No, if you can, Because by, not, by choosing not to cast your vote, that means... You're just means letting that, another party... You're just letting another party win. <laughs> yeah, but it's not another party. You're choosing you that are. you don't appreciate... You don't like any of them. What's wrong with that? You, you, that's your... You're allowed to... That opinion of neither or... So what? So you, so you expect people? So you expect people? If you had mandatory voting, then you expect people to vote for one thing, whether they like it or not. Well, it would it would actually make people look into politics properly, and then mm-hmm. realise that it's actually way more important than. Oh, it doesn't matter yeah, who we put in. I agree. In. It does absolutely matter who comes in. I mean, I, yeah, I agree. It, it does matter who comes in, of course. But you still should. Uh, you should. You have the right to vote, but you also have the right to not vote, and I think that should be uh, no, I should be allowed. I, the, the thing is, is that I think people need to be more politically aware. This country is crap. Yeah, I think more people are obsessed with ideology. Yeah, and that's whether you're right or left wing doesn't mm-hmm. matter. You you obsess about ideology and how it fits your mindset, but you need to try and understand how the other side work and why they do that. It's what I do. Yeah. Yes, I'm liberal and left leaning. It's pretty obvious, but you have to look at why people vote conservative or vote UKIP or green. Doesn't yeah. matter. You have to look into their mindset. And if you're aware, then you can actually make a more justified decision. And maybe instead of getting the people you don't want in and you go, oh, yeah, it's absolutely pointless, you can actually contribute to something mm. where. Your vote does matter because your voice is being heard. Yeah. I think the f- people, when they say, when people say, oh, it doesn't matter, these people are going to win anyway in this area, what have you. Some places are co- tightly contested, others aren't. Of course. But the, it's, once an area has got their thing, they're just like, bam. especially like between the Conservative and Labour Party. Of course. They are very, your I'm team blue or defense. team red, aren't you? Yeah, like, that is it. Like, and people are just like, well, what is the point in me voting for someone else if people won't not day, vote people... for conservative? Well, conservative is a bad ex- explanation, but like we we're saying, there's no other right sort of side mm. that's really worth anything at the minute. Whereas there's lots of people, there's <laughs> lots of different sides to the left where like there's a lot of there's a lot of options. Like we we're saying, oh yes, do you know course. what I mean? Like, so uh, y- I'll, I'll y- apologise <laughs> to any UKIP listeners that are listening. <laughs> He's just going, players. you don't exist anymore, you perfect... I know I said it, actually. No, fuck it. No, I don't <laughs> care if your kip is dying. So, right, so we're very, very broad. I mean, we, we're here to just see if Cornwall can be great again. Cornwall can be great again. But as of right now, looking at the 2017 local and general election, yeah, I, I, well, they might have a pretty torrid time of it. Who knows mm. what will happen? If people are like, oh, I don't know who to vote for, we'll just go for them. Fine. Yeah, but there's still nothing really that's grabbing Currently their attention. They have nothing tangible. No. So they're not offering really. They're offering devolution, but it's so it's like you're saying. It's so uncertain. You know, do we do we really need more devolution from the current devolution that we're going through? At the yeah. Moment? No, no. It's something no. for uncertainty is, is further down the line the, again. Is the, is the beast that no one really wants to deal with. Yeah, it's a matter of let's get out of Europe to... and then let's see what it's like after that. Maybe they can uh, make yeah, a recurrence. Who knows? Like I said, this is it could be something that could happen in in the future, mm. especially if Cornwall does get a really terrible deal out of it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, horrifyingly, it could end up being like a mild populist movement as opposed to a liberal freedom movement. Imagine yeah. that. What's that say? So, what do you mean, so let's look at France, because France today announced that they have their two candidates for the French presidency. Oh, they have they two, have right? Emmanuel Macron, right. who is an independent centrist. Right. I, he had no political leanings until he said... I'll join. And the Socialist Party and Francois Fillon, they got 
caught in huge amounts of scandal. Right. And they got ousted by this man who used to work in a bank, essentially. Okay. So he's the pro-European centrist versus Marine Le Pen, who's a name that's been going around French politics for years. And slowly, Front National, as they are called, yeah. have uh, been gaining in popularity. Yeah, this is the... Amazingly, amongst young people. Right. And these are, pe- these are the people that are like... But this is why also that there's a lot of um, trouble in France at the minute, isn't there? It's lots of lots of news coming a, out it's there. It's really difficult to try and explain. You have a country in which twenty five percent of eighteen to twenty four year olds are unemployed. Yeah. So clearly, the current system doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Whatever whatever system they've been, been employing, whether it's been mildly right or mildly left or very centrist, it hasn't been working. Mm. They've also had spates of terrorist attacks. They did they have another one over the weekend? Someone got I think a policeman got shot. I think two policemen were Is shot. I don't know whether that was yet another, you know ISIS that was attack. A, yeah, that was the last one I heard of. I didn't I don't know whether see much can detail. you can you find out for me? There's a list. They've there's so many there's list. a list. Yeah, there you go. And that's the problem. There's they they've been having a lot of issues. Um, regarding terrorist attacks by oh, extreme old. Muslims in France. So, you know, Marine Le Pen has been able to jump on this and go, look, we need to stop them coming in. Mm. And, you know, when if you look at it in that pragmatic way in which you go, yep... Oh God! Yeah, so obviously they've ha- they've had loads. In this goes back to flipping. All right, images. so attempted shooting, shooting. I think you want the one that's shooting. That one there, isn't it? Twenty seventeen shooting of Paris police officers. Mm-hmm. That's An Islam Islamist opened sorry, fire. That's, me. that's you now. Fire on police officers on the Good Champs time. Elysees ISIS claimed responsibility. So yeah, but so ISIS it, claimed responsibility, but we don't necessarily know de- whether it was definitely or, was. But, but that, that seems you know, Marine, thing. Marine Le Pen can use this to her advantage. To go, look, we we've got to stop them coming in. Mm. Whether that's actually going to fix it or not, I I suspect it wouldn't. I would actually suspect it will make it a lot worse. Yeah, but well, that, you look again, across that's the board. Opinion. You look across the board because they're like a very they're a national party, like nationalist type yes, party, yes. aren't they? Absolutely. And you look at it and. The Cornish, the the more talk about the Cornish nationalism mm-hmm, going about. There's Scottish nationalism. Yeah. There's American nationalism. Always has been. Yeah. Well, there's. Yeah, but it seems there. That's it's they've, going they've, that they've, way they've again. They've now gone on that on that basis. Yes. Yeah. And then you look at uh, the UK as a whole. So with it's going more nationalised with, mm-hmm. or, uh, yeah, nationalism because of the yeah. losing also- of Brexit coming out of Brexit. So. It is very. It, the whole world is going very like nationalistic. What? What? Ha. I think it's because it's going to be a reaction to the fact that globalization has been dominating the world for years. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, people, are, certainly lower earning people, in particular, they've all gone. Well, system's crap. It's not mm. working for us. No. We're constantly on the bottom line. We're constantly being dumped all over. Yeah. We're not getting anywhere. We, we we want to have a better standard of existence. Mm. Now it just depends on which way you wish to look at it. You know, we you know back in the sixties and the seventies, it always used to be a tussle between Labour and the Conservatives. Yeah, as to who like could provide the better standard of living. Yeah, and then pretty much since Thatcher's got in, it's either been right wing or very right wing. Yeah, you know it. it well, that's just my opinion. But again, I'm liberal and left-leaning. I would say that. <laughs> yes. um, yeah, well, so, like but, you said, Tony Blair wasn't the most, the most The most extraordinary thing out of all this populism is that there's even nationalism in Germany. Mm. Now, can you, oh, yeah. Now, Lewis, quick pop quiz. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might know the answer. Do you want to say the answer before I ask the question? I've got a feeling that you're going to say what there was a, the Nazi party was nationalist. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But that's that's what I'm, that's, so, that's, that's that's kind that's of the most where I'm, shocking thing. That's where I was kind of going with it because you look at it, and you think actually the last time that nationalism was a big uh, it was on the rise in many ways across. I think it was a global thing. Mm-hmm. A lot. It wasn't just Germany. They just took it to a flipping crazy extreme. Like, 
Because mm. I don't think Britain was you, very... You, you could say that, Lewis. Mm. Just a little bit. A, a little bit extreme. Little, just, just a little bit extreme. Yeah, but, just... <laughs> but yeah, but that, is that not what is something that um, should be concerning to, for, people, for people? No, you've got to debate it. It's mm. as simple as that. You debate it. Too many people who are left-leaning won't debate it. They'll just say, oh, you're, you're racist, you're sexist, you're homophobes, and you just denounce them. That's not debating. No. You, you, you've just shunned them. You've, you've denied them a voice. You've got to let them speak. Yeah. You let them speak, you hear their viewpoints, and you try and get, you try and get them to change it. Mm. So it's funny, like, I've just been thinking then, you look at, like, so Cornish nationalism, is that then a right-leaning thing or is it a left-leaning thing? Where does it stand? Well... Is it a, a left-leaning thing for now and then maybe a right-leaning thing at a later date? Who knows? <laughs> it, again, it all depends on the hook you try to get people to buy into it. Mm. True. Scottish nationalism is left-leaning. Yep. Which is... But then they need to be as well, because a lot of Scotland is left, they'd all vote for Labour anyway, wouldn't they? If it mm. wasn't for... Traditionally, yes. Yeah. But then, yeah. So, I mean, they've all... It's pretty much all gone yellow now, isn't it? The whole of Scotland, which is ironic. So they all but... Wanted... That's so... But... There's a big but here. I don't think it will be. I think they will lose some seats. Hmm. Because although they their majority, I think, was something like 62, 38 when it came to Brexit. Right. Large amounts of Scotland, I think it's up towards the northeast where you'd look in places like Peterhead, Aberdeen. The big fishing industries, Yeah. they were overwhelmingly in favour of Brexit. Because yeah. their viewpoint is... And it's the same down here. That was a topic we brought up before. We, we brought up before. Uh, I will. I will touch up on it again. Yeah, definitely. The fishing industry have really suffered. Yeah. Because of the, you know, quotas, and the fact that you know Spanish vessels were allowed to come into waters, mm -hmm. and you've got somewhere like Iceland that has a protective border, so that their fishing is their fishing and their fishing only. Yeah. If the UK were able to provide something like that. The fishing industry would do a lot better. Yeah, it's not as if <clears throat> if they were to make sure that the tariffs, in terms of protecting the environment, were to stay the same, then I can't see a problem with it. Yeah, yeah, I'm it's, with you. It's, it's protectionism, which again, it's another Trump thing. Mm. You know, is it's about ensuring that your economy is being looked after, and if the fishing industry improves as a result, just because we've bartered for something a bit better good yeah so i i get the feeling that some the conservatives will gain maybe like three or four seats and i reckon they'll be in the big fishing areas in scotland right okay interesting prediction yeah shall we shall we do some more local and national predictions lewis can do so um yeah i need to we dangerous could, we could do with finding out the seats again can't we Total, so Cornwall... So there's 650 seats, I believe, in total. What, for... And Cornwall has six. Graphs next to it, that. Um, Fantastic. So, please explain to the listeners what you can see. Right, basically, we've got a picture of Cornwall and all the seats, the um, general election seats, and it is overwhelmingly blue. Uh, yes, <laughs> um, as, 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 as we all know, as our listeners know, obviously. You have to get to... You have to get up to Exeter, Exeter. before it's red. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the whole of Devon, yeah. the whole of Cornwall. Just, is blue. just to put it into context, the Liberals got absolutely decimated. Yeah, normally, like before that, I think it was quite yellow, except it, for maybe the Truro area. Because if you look at if you look at Truro, Truro and I think Lou, it just shows how decimated the um, Liberals were. They got absolutely. Well, yeah, I mean North Cornwall, they still, they got two thirds of the votes of what the. Um, Conservative did in Truro and Falmouth. The, the Conservatives over won, won overwhelmingly. Mm -hmm. The the Lizard closest and Lands End was, side, um, yeah, Saint Ives was, was the closest. closest one. Liberal Democrats in the Campbell and Red Roof area was nowhere to be seen. in Liberal Democrats. No, it, it, that's a very Labourish kind yeah. of area. Not surprised really. And then yeah. South East Cornwall, which is 
Oh, that's not my that's answer. That's Cheryl that's Murray. The, the other side of the other side of the river. Yeah, for you, Cheryl, yeah. Cheryl Murray in in um, oh yeah, Lou in the yeah, Lou constituency. That... She's been there for a while. I think. Yeah, possibly two thousand and five. Certainly okay. since two twenty ten. Right. So, but if you look, so if that's on the general general side. So I I do wonder side. if like because you think about the topics that have been raised, especially like North Cornwall. Mm. I think the it, one seat that's definitely probably going to go more liberal side is North Cornwall. Just based on the fact that with this this Devon Wall thing, I think that's a big that's a big topic for might, North Cornwall. Might, yeah, it's certainly going to upset. It's going to be a topple point. If there's anybody thing. listening from Bewd, yeah, that way, Kilcampton. If you're the owner of the wooden toy shop. <laughs> Right. No, no, there is a wooden toy shop yeah, in yeah. Kilcampton. Good. That's when you know you're, you're you know venturing that. into the other side of the the world. Yes. Um, no. Th- yeah. Give us your views. That's I think that. I think that's I, one. I, it, it's it's certainly going to be annoying to some people. Absolutely. I think that's going to be one seat that will definitely change. I mean, like, and you look at the bottom, the like Saint Ives and Penzance Way. That's going to be a seat that is that's closely Tightly contested. contested. I'm, and I think it was the same in St. Austell as well. To be fair, with St. Austell, uh, when did you move here? Was it 2015? or 2016. You, 2016. To so, I'll, I'll try and give a little bit of background as to what happened in St. Austell, Newquay. Mm-hmm. In 2010, Stephen Gilbert... That rings a bell. Yep. Yeah, he was re-elected as a Lib, Lib Dem Member of Parliament. Yeah. Um... This was whilst the St. Dennis Infirmary chat was going on there. Infirmary? The infirmary? <laughs> I didn't. I... In, um, incinerator? Incinerator. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, infirmary. Yes. <laughs> Burn them, babies. <laughs> Burn them all. No, so the incinerator. Not... Why did I say infirmary? I don't know. Easily. That's a, that's a... Lost the train of thought. So the incinerator was being built in St. Dennis. And, you know... it. Nick Clegg was making a visit. I had a friend who was working for Sting Gilbert at the time. And Nick Clegg came down. Yeah. He was going to do a speech. Obviously, you know, down in Cornwall, the big deal is all to deal with local issues. Yeah. That's why question time never comes to Cornwall because, Christ, no one ever wants to go on it because, oh, Christ, some old boy is going to talk about his bloody water bill. No, I'm not going to understand why it's so expensive. <laughs> anyway, I digress. So, Clegg comes down. Local person goes, what is your view about the incinerator? And rather than saying, yeah, we don't want the incinerator, Nick Clegg says, we have no position on it. The moment he said that, Stephen Gilbert knew he was not going to be re-elected in 2015. Mm. He knew it. Because the Liberal Democrats showed no care for Cornwall. Or certainly Nick Clegg. Showed no care for Cornwall. Yeah. Well, they just, it's just not on there. It just wouldn't be on his agenda, would it? Right. So I've got a picture up here now. Currently, we are looking at the map for the 2013 local elections. And there is a significant amount of blue and a significant amount of yeah. yellow. There is quite a, a, few fair, a fair amount of independent. And that's the and difference between the local... Because, again, when you've got the big one local issue, you could definitely do it. Yeah. And then there's a reasonable... There's a few little bits of red, little bit of purple, and oh, one like green. And there's... what? F- and there's Is four that- dark splodges of MK gold. Look at it. Excuse me. Yeah, I think that... right. I reckon that's two... Meant to be two splodges down there at the it bottom. could be. So, potentially... In between five splodges of MK gold. That would, that, I think that would make sense because I'm pretty sure that five was what we said mm. was what they had won we locally would, before. So yeah, the, the, this so. is the key. You know, if 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 maybe and Kerno do look at the local issues and say, look, we'll campaign, we'll campaign on the lower level. This could be where it all starts. The lower level might be the key, mm. but they need to be. On the ball, they need to get people to believe that they're going to make the change. Yeah. And actually make sure that things will be for the better. Mm-hmm. That's the key. If you can do that, 
then that's the start of your grassroots movement. Again, do we have enough time right now? <laughs> Two weeks? I would say no. it's unlikely. But 2021, when we go through the round of elections again, who knows? I think at the end as well, it's going to start, they need to work on their local elections rather than their uh, the bigger, than the, the general picture. elections. I think oh, that's definitely need to be really focused in on that and make sure as many they can get as many seats on the local side of things before they can get yeah. and, start touching and when on they, there. And if they do get in, make sure that they do a good job and make sure they don't muck it up. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, just do whatever you can to make sure that you're doing the right thing and not upsetting people. Mm. Oh yeah, definitely. That's what you don't want to do. I would um thing is though if you've been vote if you have been voted in as a maybe in Kerno, um member of the council what would it be that would what would be the things that would mess it up do you think I suppose it it depends on the local side it, of things it's, but it's on going, a, it, there's so many different parameters yeah. that's going to affect that for example you look at I I keep referring to Bobman it's obviously where I live but so many things that have happened in Bodmin in the past 12 months that have rubbed people's ire. Yeah. You have the roadwork situation. You have the cinema situation. You've got businesses that are just going bust because of all of this. So there's a of lot of tension in Bodmin at the minute. Lots of it. Mm. And it's... I think that's really like if you... In that sort of segment, in, the, in local elections and mm. stuff, that's where you can make ground, though. When there's tension, when there's things going awry, of course, to but, potentially, that's where you can... But the thing is, is that not all... It, it's going to put potentially good councillors in danger because people might get the wrong message. Mm. Like I said, I think there's a over... I think the majority is liberal voted council members. Now, they could just be given the bullet because of the fact the general public may see them as the cause for all the roadworks and all of their rage to be pent up. Yeah. Particularly if it's maybe... No, that'd be generalising. I'm not going to generalise. <laughs> okay. It could be certain segments of the community that may be more aggrieved with the situation. Mm. So are we going to see this map in a few weeks' time? Is that going to be will, any we'll, different? When we, we'll have a recap... As we have with this episode, we'll yep. do a recap. We'll we'll see what's happened, mm-hmm. and and we'll see what, when it's we'll gone compare. all blue, we'll be like, "Well, didn't see that one coming, did we, Lewis?" Nope. <laughs> <laughs> or it'll go all yellow, and I go, "I didn't see that one coming, Lewis, did no. we?" Be interesting. I, 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 I have no idea. Again, it's all up issue, in the air, isn't it? With, with with local issues, you need to be you need to have an idea of what's going on everywhere, and mm. you you just don't. Cornwall is such a large area geographically as a um, county in comparison to, say, other areas. And it's a difficult area as well, isn't it? It's a difficult area. Not... There's, there's, you know, there's a big difference and... between, like, Constantine and, uh, I don't know, St. Mabin. Yeah. They're, they're, they're worlds apart, but they may have a similar voting. And, and it's also... The areas as well. I mean, if you just look at this map... Yeah, yeah. Obviously, this is Bodmin right in the middle. There's three sections of where Bodmin is. Mm. And then around it, that circles it like it's a little island in the middle of yeah, another yeah. thing. There's another consti- there's another constituency which oh. covers the entirety of the parameter of Bodmin. Oh, I know. You know? And then and that's like... So there's three in Bodmin plus one that goes right round all the moor and... So that'll else. be your Lanivert, your... Yeah. All, yeah. Or Leggan? Or is that going to be too far out? Mm, well, I can probably drifts into this other yellow area. Yeah, this other yellow area. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so. But it looks like it goes up as far as sort of what would be that St. Bird, I suppose. Yeah, I would, I would imagine so. It's probably like the A30 be, probably I splits that's it. That's going to be Waybridge Padstow. Area. Yeah. So it, it'll be interesting. To this see is probably not 100 percent accurate either. Uh, well, too or up to date. I'm yeah. sure there's been. There's been other elections since then for yeah. town councils and things like that. Of course. But that's the key. If you want to see the change and you want to vote Bebby and Kerno, then do so. Yes. Certainly at that's the local the... level. Might not be worth it at the general election level for the time being. They need to get their foot in the ground. Yeah, that's right. They need a, they need a foot up. And if they can get a few bits in the 
Well, you never, you never know, Lewis. Maybe in 2021, we'll elect ourselves to be MK councillors. <laughs> and then Possibly. this wouldn't be biased at all, would it? No. Nope. Well, Absolutely un, 100% unbiased. <laughs> Which you try to be. Or you kind of <laughs> I tried to be, but I failed miserably It's today. difficult, isn't it, when you have opinions? All right, well, thank you, Jameson, for this part not, two. Is there anything not, else? Not a problem. Um... Well, like I said, we'll, we'll, we'll do predictions before we go. Yes. Oh, yeah. Do, okay, we, good point. We, so we, we were going to do... So what do you reckon for Cornwall County Council? Do you think... We'll just do it as... It's we'll hard do, to tell. We'll There's too many, the, isn't there? So you, like, you so can just... I do think it'll be much the, similar. If we look at the seven options we've got here, so... And I think they're in order. order. Oh, they're definitely in order of things. So it's an... Uh, it's an independent-led council because there's mostly independents, conservatives, and liberal democrats, but they're not far away. I'm assuming they're putting this in order down the yeah, left-hand yeah. side. Labour, UKIP, um, maybe and Green. 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 So, do you think there'll be more independents or less independents? Mm. Again, we, we, be... we don't have the full. I still details, think. So I do gambling. think. I do think that it will still be an independently-led council. Okay. That's, so I still think that there'd be more independent councillors than any of the other parties mm-hmm. or any party. Um, I think that the Liberal Democrats could probably potentially take a few seats off the Conservatives, mm-hmm. but not necessarily, not a lot. I mm-hmm. don't think Labour are really going to get much of a foothold. Mm-hmm. I think the UKIP voters that were of UKIP, I think maybe one of them could turn black perhaps and go for maybe in Kerno. I do think that there might be one or two more green seats. Um, my prediction will be I think you oh, I don't know I, because of the fact that local issues are far more relevant than say national issues it's it's very difficult to tell I think you might be right I think it will be an independent leg council again mm. I think it's like the people that are running I think, the, yeah. know the people the public know them exactly so I think we might be right on that I think the conservatives and the liberals I think will gain I think they're both gain mm-hmm. personally um, I think UKIP, no. I can't see there being much purple there next time. Unless, no. uh, I think there might be, there could be one or two like say, if I, there's a I, potential, if yeah. one of them has done a particularly sterling job. Exactly, exactly. Um, maybe in Kerno, I think they'll just stay at five, which is fine. Yeah. No argument with that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, I think. Not really much different, is it? No. I think there may be, like I said, UKIP will lose some. And I reckon they'll lose them to the Conservatives. And I think Liberal pick up maybe from the Conservatives, maybe from Independents. Mm-hmm. But that's that's a guess. It'll still be an independent council. Yeah. And where do you see the general election? <laughs> if we if we don't get round to doing another podcast before oh then. My I think goodness. we should do one after, actually. We should uh, just get through well, both, yeah, both things and then we, we can, can do discuss a, both. Yeah, we'll do a review... Because they're quite both quite close together, really, aren't they? So. Well, one's in May, the other's in June. There's only a month in between, isn't it? Yeah, it's long enough. That's right. Um, yeah, we'll see. In terms of... Oh, God. Shall I start? You can start. Right, definitely, I think North Cornwall will go... To, will be Liberal, Democrat, because I just think that Devon Wall thing is just going to overwhelm it. It will mm-hmm. just be a big thing. Um, yeah, so and I'm not the biggest fan of Scott, man. No, and I, I think I think just all the, that one subject is going to turn a lot of people, especially in that area, mm-hmm. and and it's close enough as it is. I think also uh, the bottom end, Saint Ives, it's Saint Ives, Lands End, Penzance, Lizard, that will go as well because that is so tight, um, tight as well. And you reckon a lot of people will be upset by the Brexit vote? You reckon? The one thing about the six seats that are involved in Cornwall is that they voted the way their MPs told them to vote. Mm. So five areas were pro-Brexit. Mm-hmm. That was Scott Mann, George Eustace, Cheryl Murray, Steve Double, and whomever is whomever I'm missing. I'm missing one. Who am I missing? I don't know. I don't know all their names yet. I haven't, I haven't gone that deep it, it's yet. Gone, it's gone. It's way west anyway. And the I'm only slowly person, learning. The the only person who said remain was the one who was in Truro. Oh yeah. So they all voted as their MPs wanted to vote. So mm. I I don't know. I I want the Conservatives to bugger off. Obviously. Yeah. Whether it will happen, I just don't know. I can't see it happening. I think they. <laughs> 
they've even, upset, if they've upset enough people, then well, yeah, there's every opportunity mm. that they'll lose them. Um, if if I, I do think, think if I anyone is going areas. to feel the force, oh, possibly Scott Man, and maybe Steve Double, maybe yeah, I think Steve, maybe yeah, I, mean, I suppose they've, they've, Steve is. If, they, if they've upset enough people. They go. We we don't think they can be trusted. Then they may go. Mm. I don't know what Cheryl Murray. No, she'll. It's stay. massive. It's yeah. a hell of a lot she'll, of ground. Yeah, she'll stay. That. She'll stay. I 100%. think. And there's a big thing there. There's not much in the way of Liberal Democrat in the um, Red Roof area. No, Campbell, it's area. it's more Labour orientated. Yes. Of the, so I the, think um, uh, tin mining and all that. I do think that will be. I think we will. We will be. I think we'll see two Liberal Democrat seats, um, and I still, and I think the rest will still be uh, this. The rest will still be blue. Mm. I, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. It could happen. Mm. Unless the liberals, something the Liberals are going to need to like their socks off. Yeah, they're going to need to campaign hard. They're going to have to yeah. campaign really hard. I, I don't know. Um, overall, in the whole country, um, as I've said, Liberals will gain. I think they'll be the biggest. Will they be the biggest winners? Well, the thing is, I well, think I, they will. They, yeah, I, I think, think they will. I think they will gain back some of the popularity that they lost from yeah. being in government. Yeah, which Absolutely. I think was unfair to them. Um, I think time. the Conservatives will retain governmanship. Mm-hmm. I think they they're going to take seats from someone, and I think surprisingly, it could well be Labour. Yeah, and certainly some up in Scotland. I mm-hmm. reckon Labour, I think, are going to get a kick in. Yeah. And the biggest loser will be UKIP. Yeah. But I could be wrong. It could be Labour who, who might be the biggest losers. Because again, they've gone for a man who has a fantastic ideology, but he's an ideologue. Mm. And it doesn't transcribe across the whole country. Mm. And again, stop liking bad, naughty people. Yeah. <laughs> when okay. you, when, when, if you go around saying Castro was a nice guy, you, you're wrong. <laughs> wrong communism there's a reason why communism didn't work and there's the proof People yeah I can't see I can't see I'd be, I would be amazed if the conservatives didn't get in oh yeah they're just going to give they're basically just giving themselves an extra two years on top of what they had by doing this vote again so it, it just shows that Theresa May is somewhat smart yeah and, it, and if they are going to go with a hard Brexit then it gives them an extra two years to ensure that it's done how they see fit. Yeah. Whether it's better for the country or not. They don't care. No no one knows. No, they're just going to try and make it better for the elite, which is what of Jeremy Corbyn's make it working for on. The elite. And well, I think they will gain. I, I do wonder if Labour will gain a total percentage vote on what they had previously, but less seats. I, I think that's what. Oh. Oh, I don't. They could know. lose seats, but gain on. Percentages. I don't mean they're going to gain popularity. I think right. too many. What's happened with Labour is that they've gained a more fanatical base mm-hmm. that are willing to support them, but their general support has probably gone down. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how much of a, how much passion you have for something. If there's less of you to get it in, you're not getting in. No. It's as True. simple as that. Okay, and on that note. Thank you, Lewis. No, thank you once again, Jameson, wow. for being with me to no, no, discuss not, Cornwall's not greatness. Yep. And the, we, 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 thank we, you we, very we, much. We will certainly to... touch upon that next time. Yeah. More, more so. There were there were way more polls which need to be discussed. Yeah. I think next time we should we'll, we'll listen back and we'll try and knuckle down a few more bits after oh, yeah, we can absolutely. see where the future is going. Like we said, this is a bit well, more yeah, of an, we'll, we'll, an update. We'll find out what people are thinking when yes. they vote. Yes. When they do two votes, and maybe lots we can, of voting. That's it, and then maybe we can. Well, we'll keep a close eye on how maybe and Kerno do, and and if they do well, excellent. Yeah, maybe we've swung a person. <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we swung one person. <laughs> if we if we swung one person, that's a start. Devolution is the way forward. Yes, <laughs> all we need to do is swing another two hundred thousand, and we might get somewhere. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Um, okay, so yeah, good luck to everybody in the local elections. Yeah, and, and the national elections. And the national as well. elections. Yep. And for now, we should call it a day. Ciao. Ciao for now. Cheers and gone.